Hello, everyone. Welcome back to freepilotgroundschool.ca. This is the third theory of flight lesson. We're going to talk about aerofoils, or as every normal person calls it, airfoils. Let's talk about pressure distribution over the wing. If we look at panel A at the top, we already talked about zero uh, or angle of attack being the angle between the cord and the relative airflow. The top one is the angle of attack of zero. And you can see if we were to draw the amount of lift being produced at each section, that what's called the negative pressure pattern in this case, uh, which is uh, right up here. Okay, we see the that's roughly how lift is produced. And then as we increase the angle of attack, the center of pressure moves forward. Uh, so the pressure pattern is slightly different. In 12 degrees, it's quite a bit far forward. And we have uh, a pressure pattern that is heavily weighted towards the leading edge of the air uh, of the wing. We discussed this uh, definition earlier, but I'll throw it in here again. The uh, relative airflow is the direction of the airflow with respect to the wing, and the angle of attack is the angle between the wing cord and the relative airflow. So here's just another uh, picture of. Uh, Indicate or uh, explaining angle of attack. We can see here angle of attack three degrees. So at low, at uh, high speeds uh, level, and we're going to have a low angle of attack. We don't need a lot of um, angle of attack because most of our lift is coming from the high speed. Then if we go to the far right side at a low speed, we have a high angle of attack because we have less speed. Less speed means less lift, so we have to somehow compensate to uh, maintain level flight. We do that by increasing the angle of attack. So you should know that uh, at high speed, you're going to have a lower angle of attack than at uh, low speed. Air flowing over a wing has upwash and downwash. Upwash is ahead of the wing and the downwash is behind the wing. When the air flow uh, moves outward over the or under the bottom of the wing and moves inward along the top of the wing. When this airflow hits the end of the wing, it curves around forming a vortex. This causes induced drag and it's greatest at high angles of attack when you are heavy, clean and slow, such as takeoff. This is the cause of wake turbulence. Now we'll learn some more about wake turbulence in your flight operations modules. The angle of incidence is the angle between the longitudinal axes of the aircraft and the wing cord. Got this image from Bold Method. You can check out their YouTube channel and their uh, website. They have a lot of good uh, information on flight training there. So you can see here the angle of incidence between the longitudinal axes and the cord. Let's review. As angle of attack increases, the pressure distribution moves forward until the point of stall. Angle of attack is the angle between the wing cord and the relative airflow, and wingtip vortices are a byproduct of lift. An airplane with an angle of incidence of two degrees is flying level and has a pitch up attitude of four degrees. What is the angle of attack? So you may want to draw this out a bit. Let's uh, draw an airplane to help us solve this. This is absolutely terrible, sorry. We have, there we go, the angle of incidence, two degrees, okay? And it has a pitch up attitude, so between here, four degrees. Okay, so we add them together. We end up with six degrees being the angle of attack. An aircraft on the takeoff roll will produce A, negligible wingtip vortices, B, small wingtip vortices, C, large wingtip vortices, D, vortices will depend on thrust setting. So let's walk our way through. Remember that wingtip vortices are directly proportional to the lift being produced. And on the takeoff roll, an airplane will have an angle of attack, well, the same as the angle of incidence for all intents and purposes. So let's say two degrees, very little lift is being produced. It's actually negligible. So the correct answer is A. There's no lift, or it's pretty much no wingtip vortices. That concludes this lesson on airfoils. We'll see you on our next lesson in theory of flight. Thanks for joining me.